Hello, everyone, and thank you for listening. My name is Erica Knight, and I'm a GIS data analyst with the National Audubon Society. I'll be speaking to you today about Audubon's Migratory Bird Initiative and the work that we're doing to map bird migrations across the Western Hemisphere. More than half of the bird species that regularly occur in Canada and the United States are migratory, over 500 species, and they spend half to three quarters of the year in other countries. Half of these species have seriously declined and an estimated 2.5 billion migratory birds have been lost since 1970. Migration is the riskiest part of the yearly activities of a migratory bird, but it's the least understood. To address this, Audubon's Migratory Bird Initiative was formed to protect migratory birds by using the power of science, interpretation, network engagement, and partnerships to focus on the most important places that birds rely on throughout their life cycle, breeding grounds, migratory stopover sites, and wintering grounds. The vision of the Migratory Bird Initiative is to secure the future of North American migratory birds by ident identifying the places they need to thrive, taking actions that protect the places that matter most across the Americas, and engaging people in the joy of migration. We're working with numerous institutions, researchers, and community members to achieve this. So how will we do it? Audubon is a science-based conservation organization and the Migratory Bird Initiative, or MBI, bridges our expertise in science with conservation and policy. So we'll start by consolidating and analyzing existing migratory bird science across a full annual cycle, the course of a year. We're planning to build a migratory bird conservation platform to distill the scientific knowledge and activate it for conservation. We'll apply science to prioritize the places that matter most to migratory birds and take actions to protect and reduce threats to these places. Working across the Western Hemisphere, MBI will strategically inform where Audubon works internationally in conjunction with our local partners. We hope to excite, engage, and, uni and unify the Audubon network of state and local chapters and members, as well as other folks who are curious about birds. Because I only have 15 minutes today, I'll spend the rest of my time focused mostly on these items outlined in red and tell you about a set of animated maps we are building for the Migratory Bird Conservation Platform. A key component of the work we're doing is to build maps that engage, excite, and inform, but we can't build maps without data. There are many different technologies and methods for collecting information about where birds occur, and it's a huge effort just to identify what data exists. Studies and data holders are scattered, and we have two full-time staff dedicated just to identifying researchers and data holders, talking with them about the MBI, and building understanding for how we'd like to use their data. Once we have identified and acquired data from contributors, we integrate those data to create standardized layer, data layers for each species, which we store in a comprehensive database of migra spatial migration information. In doing this, we are building upon the work of many, many people, from those collecting data to those developing new analyses and models. I'm glossing over the details of this process of acquiring and standardizing data here, but it's not a simple task. From talking with numerous researchers to flagging da data outliers in a standardized process, it's critical, foundational, time-consuming first step of the Migratory Bird Initiative to integrate as much collective knowledge about bird migration as we can. And it sets us up for future success in a few ways. First, it helps us gain a more comprehensive understanding of migratory birds' needs throughout the annual cycle. It can be combined with information about threats to the places that migratory birds need to help us develop specific conservation and policy actions. And it also allows us to summarize these data into maps and visuals that help us see patterns and stories we might otherwise miss. One type of map we're building is what we're calling an annual cycle map. This is an animated graphic that illustrates migratory movements of a species in the context of summer and winter ranges. 
These maps summarize the complexity of migration and bring data to life in a way that uniquely engages people. The maps drive home just how much time birds spend away from their temperate breeding grounds, which is why we need to protect faraway places. Here you're seeing the journeys of American white pelicans over the course of a year or an annual cycle. But there are over 500 species we want to protect and we're making a map like this for each species. So I'll tell you a little bit more about how we do this. Since we'll be making over 500 of these maps and we anticipate wanting to be able to update them repeatedly as we acquire more migration data in the coming years, the map building process needed to be automated as much as possible. So we started by building a base map in ArcGIS Pro centered on the Western Hemisphere, since that's our area of interest. Because each migratory species has a different range, we need to be able to zoom into the portion of the base map that's relative, relevant to that species. We automated this using Python ArcPy camera settings with extent shape files that we created for each species, such that the map can be centered on the species range. And then we add range information, showing where the species lives during the breeding season, during the non-breeding season, and where these birds occur all year. On top of the ranges, we add more specific information about where and when the species lives, which we've shown using dot density symbology to give the impression of where individual birds tend to be more versus less concentrated. This image shows dots for one week out of the year, but the shape file behind it contains dots for each week, which are animated over the course of the year. We do this using ArcPy to export 52 images, one for each week of the year, using a definition query to display only the dots for each specific week. Those images are later stitched together into an animation using a separate Python script. This dot density layer tells us when and where bird, birds have been observed. Collecting this kind of data usually involves someone going outside and recording information about what they saw or heard, including the species observed, location of the observation, and the date of the observation. In this example that you're seeing, the dot density layer comes from models created by Cornell Lab of Ornithology based on submissions to eBird, an online database of bird observation. Animating this kind of information tells us about movement at the species level, but this kind of data can't show us the pathways that individual birds follow as they move from place to place. For that, we need to build upon the incredible hard work that Cornell has produced through its eBird Status and Trends products and the eBird records that community scientists across the country have contributed to those records by adding pathway data to the map. So pathway data tells us the specific migratory routes that individual birds take. In this map, you can see pathways that three individual pelicans took during spring migration in the solid lines and fall migration in the dashed lines. This kind of data is collected via different technologies, all of which involve attaching a locating device to a bird's back and recording where it travels. For larger birds, this might be a GPS unit with a mini solar panel. Smaller sized birds require smaller tracking devices called geolocators, which tend to have more locational error. In order to appropriately summarize and map the pathway data, the technology used to track the bird and its associated locational error needs to be taken into account. We've developed an, developed an extensive process using R code to flag and remove points with high locational error. We also smoothed the pathway data over both space and time to help simplify the visual interpretation that needs to be done in a viewer's mind while staying true to the scientific accuracy of the data. Each map is reviewed for data accuracy by an expert before we make it public. So coming back to the map we're building, let's add in some pathway information. We'll start by adding the locations where individual birds were tagged. This helps give a sense of which parts of the species range or area of use have pathway information. For American white pelicans, we actually have a good amount of pathway data available to map. 
57 tracked birds, but other species have much less of this kind of data. For some species, no birds have been tracked. In this map, you can see we have pathway information about birds tagged in Utah and Minnesota, but we don't know anything about birds that breed in Saskatchewan. Those birds may have different migra migratory journeys than those we can show on this map. We add the pathway information as a faint static image to help cement information about migration routes in the viewer's memory. And finally, we add the animated migratory pathways for individual birds on top. Pathway data are difficult, time consuming, and it's expensive to collect. And many, many researchers have generously agreed to share their data with us. We add information about these data con con contributions at the end of the animation to make sure that their hard work is acknowledged. The data citations are managed and added to the animation via an internal system of data set IDs. Lotero citation management software, and Python and R scripts. I'll show you a couple animations for other species to help you give, give a sense of the variability in map scale, migration strategies, and species ranges that we're working with. This map shows migrations for Swainson's hawks, which travel from mid to southern South America to western North America and back sticking over land rather than venturing over the ocean as they travel through Central America. Here's a map for deer falcons, which is centered on the more northern portion of our area of interest. This species lives in Arctic and subarctic regions around the globe. And you can see in the map that some birds tagged in Alaska migrated to Eastern Russia. So taking a step back out to the broader context of the Migratory Bird Initiative, the animated maps I've shown you will be embedded in Audubon's online field guide with the ability to pan, zoom in and out, and stop and start the animation for your favorite bird. You'll be able to explore the maps and field guide to learn about the natural history of the species, impacts of climate change, potential threats, and soon their migration. The annual cycle maps you've seen, along with additional maps of bird connections between places, and threats to birds will be combined on the Migratory Bird Conservation Platform to help put migration into a hemispheric context, making places and conservation issues occurring far away more local. In collaboration with the Audubon network of state and local chapters, researchers, community scientists, and partners, the MBI strives to connect places and people. So keep an eye out for the Migratory Bird Conservation Platform, which is coming next July. And in the meantime, you can learn more about the work we're doing by visiting our website at audubon.org migration, or feel free to reach out via email. Thank you for listening.